play set, some seven wire uh, thermostat wire and a Honeywell smart thermostat, which was $69, connects to Wi-Fi, does everything the very expensive CTK04 does, and um, but it's a lot easier to deal with. And so we're gonna do this twice. Um, the first thing be quick and dirty because I do not like being in a house without air conditioning. It's getting hot in here and I don't like to be hot in my house. It was bad enough sleeping last night, but it was tolerable. So we're gonna get it done. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just get some wire out there to get it connected and get it working. And then from there, I will worry about running conduit and making it right. I don't know if you guys can see it, there is a future there for a vent hood and that's where the wire is going out for the moment. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a pain in the ass to get back there and get it done, but I'll let you watch. One of the reasons I did it this way is I wanted a large cartridge filter for my unit that would provide a decent amount of dust capture and still be um, not restrictive to my unit. Um, you know, it doesn't do you any good to put in an efficient unit and then strangle it with a crappy ass filter that works more like a blanket. So anyway, I get off my high horse here. I'm going to do this barefoot because, well, I like sharp objects. No, seriously, I need to be able to feel where my feet are at. And this is going to be challenging to get in here. flexibility so one of the things I did is it hangs from studs and that's so that any vibration goes up you know when I when I talked to the air conditioning folks that my friends recommended I got a lot of crappy answers I'm sad to say didn't want to run a manual J didn't want to run a manual D you know it's a spray foam insulated house cookie cutter solutions don't work and uh, you don't want to over air condition the house because if you do what you're going to wind up with is a damp house and that's toxic to a spray foam. So I did my own manual D, my own manual J, and then I chose equipment accordingly. I, I'm a little frustrated with Emerson's shortcut, but I'm not going to fault Goodman for that because that's really Emerson's crappy ass design that has no um, tolerance for surge. Uh, and that's really what it is. An induced surge blew out the, um, the community, the bus on the, um, comfort net and so here we are anyway all right so let's get busy because we need these parts so I don't have this little um, plug for the outdoor unit but these are keyed and they're not keyed terribly well so it uses little strips on the back and if you just take your thumb you can lift these up and boom now it'll fit almost anywhere uh, these are keyed to really protect you, and I do think it's a good idea, but in a pinch, I have zero qualms with using what I got to get my air conditioner to work. So now that is a universal plug, and it will now fit anywhere. Um, you know, it, it, literally, it, it'll fit in any slot, but you gotta have common sense and not put it in the wrong slot. So we're going to use these on the outside. I did save this, which goes on the inside, and it bypasses the comfort net one and two slot, which are the bus. So we'll, we'll come back to this in a minute. For now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to go outside and we're going to pull that wire down and get busy. So let's talk about safety for a second. Uh, first thing I did is I pulled the disconnect because 230 volts is enough to teach you a lesson and you need to have some respect for it. So anyway, with that out of the way, let's get down to copper tacks. The tension is this capacitor. Treat that like it's going to kill you because it just might. There's a lot of energy stored in there and it will bite you hard if you don't respect it and stay the hell away from it. All right, so 
Next item on our agenda is to liberate this connector. And we only need seven of these, but again, I'm just gonna kinda do some field modifications. Well, those are our, our um, terminals. And this has got the same nonsense on it, so we're just gonna go ahead and fry these off. Well, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. There is more than one way to succeed. And you want to watch your fingers because this stuff does bite. What I mean by that is it's real easy to jab your finger with a screwdriver when you're misusing a screwdriver like this. There we go. Universal plug created. Alright, so what we're going to do now is just ignore the labels that are on here and we're going to go by these because what we need is RC and then W1, Y1, Y2, L and O. And I have no idea what L does. Whatever, we're going to hook it up. Let me grab my wire. Alright, so I've loosened this so that I could pull my wire up behind the control board. Um, because this wire is not going to get replaced again. And now I'm going to go ahead and just put this back together. First things first, get the ground lug seated. Well, that's stupid. How the hell was that? Oh, it was up there. That's right. Ooh, maybe not. I thought that was on the bottom. There's one of them. Now let's figure out why this won't go back in. Don't tell me they had a fucking nut behind there. That's stupid. All right, now I gotta open this up and see what the hell's going on here. Sure enough, they were using a nut behind here, which is just fucking asinine because it makes it very difficult if you have to loosen that board for some reason, like this. In fact, I don't know how I'm gonna put it back together without taking it all the way apart. So let me see how that works. I can't get it fully in there, but it's partly in there. It will do its job. So we're gonna get these wires tucked in here the way we want them. all the way in there. What a pain in the ass. I am fairly convinced that whoever designs this stuff doesn't actually have to work with it. Therefore, the ergonomics of it and the serviceability don't matter because Goodman doesn't pay for this, so the hell with it. The building owner or the homeowner can just kiss their ass. So, at one point I read we needed to bond the grounds, so for now I'm going to leave that tucked out. Alright, so, got a bunch of wires here. So we'll start with red and blue because we know what these are going to do. This is going to be our, and we're going to ignore these labels and we're going to go by these labels. So that's red and common. So let's loosen all this up. And this is a field expedient solution, sometimes called field engineering, sometimes called rigged. But we'd like an air conditioner. 
and we're less concerned about pretty and more concerned about functional and we will order the part for 12 bucks and do it right at a later point that's too much wire so we'll trim that down and that's not quite enough yeah the hell with it. so red and common And I'm going to do something a little bit out of the ordinary here. I'm going to bond the transformers because I think there's a reason there's a transformer out here. And I don't want to find out why there's transformer out here. I think it was for communicating, but it isn't going to hurt anything if we bond a second transformer in here. bring the white wire in because that's the next one in our sequence we've got red common white one get to yellow one and yellow two so yellow one is going to be yellow and yellow two is going to be brown because brown has actually got a fair amount of yellow in it for those that don't know however you do it it just needs to be something you can remember Like to do these one wire at a time because it's frustrating enough as it is and one of the things i will agree with the ac guys is if you don't know what the hell you're doing stay out of here you know it's it's memorial day so the odds of me getting a tech that can spell banana out here are pretty slim so we're just going to fold that back And then we don't know what L does, so we're going to make L green to represent what we're leaving behind, which is money. And then orange which is the reversing valve. All right, and there are our connectors. We're just gonna wind this up so that it is kind of workmanlike. And now we're gonna go inside. But before we do, we're gonna go get our, our uh, I'm gonna go get my phone and take a picture of this. Actually, I'm gonna get my iPad because I can read the iPad. And I just wanna take a picture of the sequence so that I can remember it because in 30 seconds I will be upstairs and I won't be able to remember it. Right, so um, I just made a gamble that this is enough wire. If it is, it is. If it isn't, I'll have to replace it. Um, I'm gonna run conduit. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this wire. No, we're not. We're not going to cut it out here. So let's go ahead and, and just leave that alone. And that's a good stub right there. All will make sense in a moment. Yeah, I want a little. 
little bit more wire to work with. Okay. So we are going to respect the wiring code for Goodman on here. So as before, we will start with red and common or blue. Kind of glad I saved this because I would be up a creek without a paddle if I had not. Okay, next comes white. Actually, green is in there. I don't know what the green is supposed to be, so we'll go ahead and hook up the white. Yellow one. And brown will be yellow two. These are the ones we really need right now because these are our uh, first and second stage cooling. And then orange. And there's a connection for a dehumidistat, which is something I will install but it is not a today project. They're about 20 bucks on eBay for a Honeywell, so that's what I'll order. Let me stop. So yes, we most decidedly want green. Green is our fan motor. And apparently L on the outside is to turn on a light. Who cares? We'll deal with that later. Alright, so at this point we got this wired, and then this just slips up in here like this. And then we'll bring this out through here. And we'll bring it over to here. And again, guys, this is ghetto rigged right now. We just we're just trying to get to a point where we have some air conditioning. So the next piece of this project is to get the thermostat set up. So I don't think you need to watch that. So I'm going to do something most of you would probably consider crazy, and you might be right, but I'm going to put my thermostat in the attic temporarily because remember. The goal here is to get air conditioning, and we'll make it pretty later. So, we're just gonna get it installed, and we will find a better place for it later. I don't have the right wire on the wall downstairs, so I can't put it there. One of the biggest things that I regret about this thermostat is that uh, when I installed it, 
I only put in what Goodman recommended and that was a tragic mistake because I trusted it to work and it doesn't so now for the fun part which is figuring out how to mate all these damn wires together so this is our outdoor wire and then this is our thermostat wire All right, so pretty sure red and blue are gonna be red and blue no matter where. So let's get that out of the way. All right, friends, so I'm sorry I didn't film uh, a big chunk of squabbling with the thermostat and the wiring. I originally bought a $69 thermostat from Home Depot, uh, Honeywell HTRX, doesn't work, whatever. I, I really don't know what the model number is. Whatever it was, it was not compatible with two-stage uh, heat pump. No big deal. So I took it back and I bought a T9, which is a $169 thermostat, but it has some cool features. You know, there's something to be said for that. I have a Lazza Neste. Um, now, I've just I made mean, this is literally rigged up because I did not have air conditioning for almost a day, and in Texas, no air conditioning. No air conditioning. You know, I'm not going to say it's a crisis, but it's a problem. It's definitely a problem, okay? So now I have air conditioning. Now, I'm not done. I still need to go. It, it's functional, but I need to go in here and make sure all my dip switches are set correctly. I wanted to cool the house down. It was at 84 degrees, which is a tad on the warm side for inside my house. I'm used to keeping it 70, 72. Um, the only thing that I've really lost is variable sp uh, fan speed. So if you have a good for nothing man or a man damn it, no unit and it has discomfort net built in and it dies on you don't spend thousands of dollars go buy you forty dollars worth of wire go buy you a thermostat and make something work run a wire run a seven wire out there or if you don't want to do it call an honest and reputable air conditioning guy okay they do exist I'm just very self-reliant and it's Memorial Day and I really don't expect anybody to come rescue my ass on a Memorial Day and the people who would probably wouldn't be able to spell ComfortNet, much less understand it. So I do want to give a shout out to um, Israel's AC. Uh, your video from three years ago really helped point me in the right direction. I do greatly appreciate that from the coolness of my plenum slash attic. Um, I will do a second video. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to run conduit out. Uh, my walls are spray foam, so I, I can't run the wire down to the AC unit through the wall. So I'm going to go out uh, the gable end, and then I'm going to come down in three-quarter inch conduit. It's overkill, but it's real easy to fish in three-quarter inch conduit, and it's not that much bigger than half inch. And I'm going to get that all cleaned up, and then I'll paint it because I was painting the house anyway. Uh, that's been this month's project. Um, and then I'm gonna try and marry this up to this terminal block so that future changes don't have to be like this. And then, and then I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do about where the thermostat lives. The attic is really not the right place for it. It'll be okay for tonight and for a few days, but this isn't really the right spot for it. So the problem is when I installed the Goodman or Good For Nothing Man unit, um, I ran two wires out to the condenser and I ran four wires to the thermostat. I really regret that. I wish I'd run conduit to both locations because this would be down in the hallway where it lives and belongs. So I got to figure out how this is going to happen. I might be able to work some miracles and get to get wire down to that, but it ain't going to happen today and I needed AC today. Okay, I need an AC today because I don't want to sleep in a hot house again. 75-ish, 76-ish was tolerable that I slept last night, but 
No, that's why we have AC in Texas. And, and if you're somebody that likes it warm, well, God bless you. I don't like it warm. That's why I live in Texas and I have great AC. Um, anyway, so, you know, I'll do a part two on hanging conduit and I'll probably do a part three on fishing um, the wire. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's doable, but it's real involved and it's, it involves going someplace I'd rather not go, which is above my aquarium. Uh, the aquariums are not full, so it is very doable to open that ceiling up and that would give me access to get back here with a fish stick and it would give me access to get to the top of the wall and yeah i probably can fish seven strand wire down there and that probably is what i'll do because i'm real particular about having shit the way i want it so uh, anyway uh a quick another quick shout out do say hello to my friend wasp in here somehow a red wasp got in here and so i vacuumed him up and he's hanging out inside my little vacuum anyway y'all have a great night i'm gonna go shower and resume feeling human again and uh, wait for this house to get down to a very comfortable 72 degrees.